camera rolling. <laughs> all right, John. Yeah. All right. So you you brought some stuff today. Some stuff I've seen before, and maybe some stuff I haven't. Yeah. Lots, so I, 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 I keep lots of them in video. A lot of people catch back books back then as the things to do. So yeah. any little piece I've got with them. I know. I miss that a lot nowadays. I feel like I want to like. Actually, I was thinking when I was home, looking through all the family photographs, that I really wanted to put together a scrapbook soon. So I've yeah. kept lots of stuff being there with posters I can see on the yeah. wall. And this, that's Vince's drawing mm. of it, which I finished off with a type. And uh, yeah. I've just got loads of scrapbook of stuff and things. Um, yeah. One of the things Tracy asked me to do, they got some badges made when they played the marquee that time in September 1980. She asked me to stand in a coil or hand them all out for free, which I thought was a good move. Free badge, usually they're charging something like extortion of like 20 pence back mm. then mm. and um, so I was handing out these badges to people and uh, little did I know that someone turned down a free badge <laughs> would later become my wife when I met her two and a half oh, years yeah. later. <laughs> like, yeah. Well I did marry her two and a half years later, not the first time I met her but um, yeah. so I had these badges and I had badge, but I didn't finish handing them all out you see so oh. I've, I've got a few left here and um, you can have one. They're Thank 4 you. 99 each, but oh, okay. I'll, buy it, I'll buy them now on eBay. But you can have that one. I'm, well, it's fair, isn't it? Free one for the Martian daughter. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but got the, I don't know if I should bring it up to the camera. <laughs> Tracy to meet her at the uh, offices of EMI in Manchester Square, so I was quite proud of going there. And I've given all these records. This is um, a test pressing of the A side, one of six. Mm -hmm. There were six of each side done, that's never been played. And you can see the date stamp there is 24th of, 24th of March 81. Mm -hmm. Here's the single in the sleeve. That's, that copy's never been played. I've got two, you see. Get off. <laughs> Never been touched by a human hand oh, or yeah. like a Martian Worth hand. Worth more than gold. <laughs> and is the the uh, advertising poster for it. it? Was on my wall. No, it wasn't. This one didn't go on the wall. I just told you the record I did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is. Yep. Yeah. Oh, wait. You know what? You can do a little comparison. How's it looking? Good. Apparently, well, my, my, my mate's got a copy of this record with that with the song's lyrics text on it, and I've never seen that cover. I've actually always wondered what this is. This um, I it's it's a, lyrics, isn't it? I don't know from what song. No, it's not. No one knows it well. It says you're all seductive temptress in this exotic Egyptian this ex exotic Egyptian drape rayon and acetate crepe sheath. The secret is in the soft shearing that flows and clings <laughs> along every curve, front and back, molding the hip line into an Egyptian drape. Molded boned bustine with pleated folds accentuates a curving bosom. Self material bow dramatizes the sinus black line, black zipper closing, vivid red, wicked black and white. So sizes 10 to 20, they're talking about her dress. So, yeah, it must be that. Yeah, it's part of the image to create that uh, mm. sort of thing. So that's, that's the weapons that way. Here's my. This is the official EMI fan club folder. I think I gave them out to play from the fan club. You've got a fan club card, which I've done the artwork for, yeah. plus a badge. You got to So now everyone has a chance to join. Publicity photo, EMI and publicity photo. And uh, you've got the uh, history of the band. Yeah, that's really great. And also song titles. Song titles. All number of songs. Sure, yeah. Yes. And uh, offers for uh, different style of t-shirts. There's a, a theme they try to create. Yeah, the, with the comp, sort of comic book theme. Yeah. yeah. And uh, here and here's a load of stuff. A, yeah. Um, ticket for the music machine, 50 pence off. Don't get that nowadays, do you? Yeah. Two stickers, which I've never used. <laughs> um, that was the club. This is when uh, they got on the... Uh, Tuesday, 23rd of June, 1981. Sorry, still the only photograph I've ever seen of Tracy. 
is this the only one I've got. Of her. Yeah. This is from the Daily Mail, 23rd of June 81, talking about female managers. They're all band lined up there. And uh, various photos. And there's Jerry there, looking uh, mm -hmm. quite a good there backstage. That's Jerry. And that's Kev, Kev Addison. Kevin, right? yeah. you see Spud. Or Dan, mm -hmm. if you prefer his nowadays. There's uh, Duncan and Jay, the Duncan, Duncan sisters. Jerry, yeah. That's backstage at the moment. Yeah. And we've got that photo. And this is uh, from the Love Affair. So this is what all the teen girls the were teen after girl in 1980. Mm -hmm. So I've got a date on this. That was June 81 as well. So really after the record came out, there was a real sort of push towards them. I say slightly, not different image, but presenting them to a different audience to mm. get them across, which was good. We thought it was great. We mm. thought it was great. And here's some of the little handouts that I did. Yeah. So Andrew and Metro set. It's all 100 Club, yeah. And this is something, I mean, I've done that and Tracy photocopied it, popping the tray, just put the picture on. And these. The original, these are the original photocopies of the artwork I did before I was giving it to Trace to be printed. So obviously I didn't get a, an official one of those, but that's my photocopy I did at the artwork production studio I did. Mm. There's an early one, I don't think I did that. And this is an early one before I saw That them. one's really cool. Oh, didn't I think before I saw them, but that's the, so first, that's the, that's the yeah. original artwork. Mm. Well, that's the original artwork for the t-shirt and the badge. Mm. I just love that they use like Swedish letters as well. <laughs> like, well... That isn't, but that is all one. Yeah. There's a, some on the other side. There's the ticket I did for the Whiskey of Go Go. That's a reasonable artwork again. I don't think the ticket might be in your book. I do all these different things here that uh, they came up with pictures they dropped on, which was different to usual. Battery, okay. Hey. Sorry, the battery. Oh, right. So, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, oh, can we, talk, can we talk about this though? Because I think that this is really cool, the fact that you wrote down all of these gigs. So this is about 35, you said, gigs? Yeah, it's about, so? about 35 gigs. Um, I just write these right down. I've got a proper gig list at home of every gig I've been to, what time I have, what time it started, um, I don't know what, time, what date it was on, so yeah. what time, uh, yeah. how much to pay to get in, who was on support bands and where it has, because sometimes you wake up the next morning, a couple of days later, you've forgotten, haven't you? Yeah. Um, so yeah. I used to write that down on my martial dance. Great to have now. On my, yeah. on my head, head of, my martial dance playing club head paper, which... Uh, yeah, this is all something I want, was these set lists. Um, that's two, yeah. Where's that button from? That's on the marquee, July 81. So this is the original set list of their gig, and um, yeah, I've heard a couple of these. I've heard Ouija board, standalone, obviously. Yeah. Not the bad thing. See, and ever have worked for a bit live at Billy's. Yeah. Which is that? Live at Billy's. Oh, that's great. And this is one with Thomas and Beckett, and you have Daniel Kent Road on the nineteenth uh, of August. And um, yeah, there's just various bits and pieces there, various playing club bits stuff. Bits and pieces from. Russian dance history. Um, and now let's get to that t-shirt. Now this is the original t-shirt. I think it still fits, but I won't try it on just in case it splits. <laughs> but, oh wow. So that I showed you the artwork earlier. So along with the badges you would give these out or would you no, try and sell them? They'd sell the t-shirts. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, they're reducing it, that artwork down to the size of the badge. I would have made this. the line for the head bigger. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to keep that, would I? No, you want to hang on to it. Give her a feedback, she's <laughs> not oh, I have to ask. I have to ask. <laughs> it's worth a try. One last thing. Um, Is your book, yeah. yes. Um, back in June 7, June 2013, I had a book published. It was uh, it's a music book, a history book, but it's more of a record collector's guide. Um, Back in the day before we had picture sleeves like this, which were only mass introduced in this country in the late 1970s, you had these. Typical record company sleeve. Now, Martian's Dance Record came in April 81. Here, my sleeve, this one, which has been around throughout most of the 1970s, ended towards the end of 1980. So you wouldn't have seen that. So my book covers talks about all the different record sleeves and that when they was out, so it's like a collector's book, but also 
it gives a history of the record label, who set it up and where and when. And um, I talk about some of the acts on that record label to give you an idea of who was records would have appeared in the sleeves. And also I talk about it in a general, more general term to give an idea of what kind of music was going on in that period in time. Mm -hmm. So obviously Martian Dance is out of jurisdiction of what the book's about. I'll just quickly hold it up so you get all the different sleeves, yeah, all your the pages of text. Yeah. Um, so it's good for someone who doesn't know about yes, that and history, it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a real collector's book. It's got a load of five-star reviews in music magazines. Record Collector made it one of their top books of the year. It's got a lot of five-star reviews and praise on Amazon as well. Um, now, obviously, Martians aren't being kind of out of the jurisdiction of what the book's about because that sleeve ended before their record came out, so it wouldn't be really right to talk about them, but it's my book. <laughs> and I do what I have. And rather ironically, the publisher's in Sweden. Yeah. So, just to tie up the end of the story, I put here, and I managed to get Martian Dance in. Yeah. It says, or oh, I say, in April 1981 came Martian Dance, a young North London group inspired by early Adam and the Ants. Despite two John Peel sessions and a growing fan base, they failed to pass the 100 mark with the situation. So that book got uh, accepted into the British Library a year and a half ago, so that's it for prosperity for the nation to read. So they get mentioned somewhere, they're not going to get forgotten. It's in amongst 180,000 words. But yeah, but it's there. It is there. So it's there. my yeah. little bit to I love that you saved the page. That's just yeah. For my little bit to help us out. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for showing that. Yeah, thank you so for like, coming. Yeah. That's all right. It was in the post. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think we're ready to cut that there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.